Uh, but if you have old, you know, Stone Age software, or you have really high performance software that doesn't run on the web, uh, and you need to test that, it's a little bit less clear. So we went and we looked at lots and lots and lots of different tools, and one that we found that works pretty well that uh, also looks pretty much exactly like Selenium and Appium in the way that you use it, though HP would say it's a lot better, but um, I'll get to that later, <laughs> is uh, LeanFT from HP. So uh, this is right after lunch, and I felt like my morning presentation was a little bit boring, and everybody was kind of in glaze, so I tried to make this one a little more entertaining. So uh, what, what are all these things that are non-web and Mobile, yeah, everything is web and mobile these days. So, yeah, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, yeah, there were these beasts, which most of you probably haven't seen. You know, these young bucks. And uh, we played lots of computer games that looked like this, and we thought they were really great. Yeah. Oh, boy, the 80s. And... <laughs> Uh, then uh, it was time to actually get online and talk to other people. Yeah, they had this thing called an acoustic coupler modem, and modem is stored for a modulator, demodulator, and you could dial up another computer and stick the, your phone into there. And yeah, they made this great 80s movie, which maybe you haven't seen, called War Games, where he's got exactly one of those, and he almost starts World War III. And then, you know, those were too slow, so you got ones you could plug into the phone, and then you got online and you went to BBSs. And, well, that's slow, so let's do something faster. Well, we have FTP before they had the web, which was really, really fast, but it had an absolutely horrible user interface. And then this guy in Geneva wrote this thing on the Next, which most of you also probably never used, called WorldWideWeb.app. Nobody ever heard of it. And... Then NCSA Mosaic came out. Websites used to look like this. And now uh, pretty much everything is being done for the web. Uh, then they came out with this great thing, which was probably more powerful than a multi-million dollar computer in the 70s. And now we raise our children with them. I don't particularly recommend this, but it's quite normal in America, unfortunately. So these days, most applications are web or mobile apps, yeah? and. Uh, I'd say 80 to 90% of what I see even in big old companies are web applications. Uh, mobile apps are, of course, less used for people sitting in an office because they have a computer in front of them. And if we want to test these, uh, we have Selenium and Appium. But if we want to do something else, yeah, we got these old client-server applications, yeah, and c .net, fat client, Java Swing, fat client apps. Um, you saw more of these maybe 10, 15 years ago, but there's still some hanging around. So for fat client testing, we've discovered LeanFT. Um, after, now, it must be said there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different tools out there that you can use, and you could spend your lifetime trying different tools. So. We picked some and tried them out, and this was one of the ones that we liked. We already had licenses for it, because we had licenses for UFT. So I am a big proponent of open source software. I couldn't find a great open source solution for this. So if there's no open source solution, you can pay for something. And you can test web, you can test Java, mobile applications, normal Windows application, .NET, Windows Forms, and WPF. I don't even know what that is, because I'm not a C-sharp developer. Uh, SAP if you're using SAP. And uh, so the great thing about this is it follows the pattern that Selenium, well, Selenium, I suppose, invented it and then Appium sort of copied it. So if you're testing an app, what do you do? Well, if you're a person, you look at what's on the app, you read it, you type things into it, you click on it. So if you're testing it automatically, you do the same thing. You query for user interface elements. This is, of course, UI testing, yeah? You query for user interface elements, yeah? And then you can say, what does that say? Or let me type something into that, or let me click on that. And this is how you do your automation tests. So Selenium made that pretty clear with the web. You can query for objects in the DOM, type into them, click on them, read what they say. Obviously, looking at pictures is difficult. That's why uh, there's great tools like Appla Tools for that. Um, and then they said, well, why don't we take the same basic API and do it for mobile testing? And um, Appium was born. 
And LeonFT takes the same basic idea and extends it to everything else. So uh, you can do all your web testing and all your mobile testing with LeonFT, no problem, but you can test all the fat client apps as well. I'm sure there are things you can't test, but uh, most of the things that we've come up Well, okay, the thing that we couldn't test with LeonFT is Citrix stuff because Citrix, it's not, LeanFT actually queries the operating system for the objects at the base level. And with Citrix, all you have is a picture. Yeah? So it has no idea what's going on there. And then you have to try to use visual testing, which uh, Sakuli is great. It's open source, but you know, it's, sometimes it's hard to uniquely identify items on the screen or with, you know, if you're doing bitmap matching, different graphics cards render the bitmaps differently. So. That's the, the last option. So this is essentially how it works. Um, you see up here, we have an edit field now. And this is a, a interface that's clear across all the different things. So this is a Windows C++ application. It's a native application. And you can see it says, so it says desktop. This is how it queries. Yeah, it says desktop describe. Then it's looking for a dialog box. Yeah, and then it has a description builder. Is it owned by this application? Is it a child window? What does it say in it? Yeah. And then what's its native class number? So all that ugly stuff is getting you a text field that's on the screen. Yeah. And then I can get the I can say the license text, get the text that's inside the text field. Yeah. So this is a C fat client application, but it looks this part is kinda ugly, yeah. But once you actually have a handle to what you're trying to test, it looks pretty much like Selenium. Yeah? And then you say, OK, I want it to say this. Uh, and I get a button, same thing. I query for something on there. And I can click on the button. And then it should. this test is looking for an error message. So now what is interesting is The API for all of the different um, implementations is actually exactly the same. So you can see here, I have an edit field. And up here, I'm saying that I want to use the standard Windows uh, it, um, UI element set. But let's say I comment this out. So now here's my edit field. Now you can see that there is seven different implementations of edit field. Yeah? So there's a mobile edit field, the SAP GUI, some other SAP UI, normal Windows, a web edit field, and then the two C-sharp uh, .NET implementations. Yeah? And what is interesting is that all of these have the exact same interface. So if you're rewriting, if you're reusing a test, if you have different implementations of the same application, you can reuse your test and just plug in whichever implementation it is. That probably doesn't happen all that often, but uh, for most people it's interesting that you can use the same API so that the testing is exactly the same. No, the, um, the API that you use to manipulate the fields is exactly the same regardless of the implementation. Of course, with some implementations you can do more than with others, but and that is exposed as well. So one thing that... Um, LeanFT has that could make it better than Selenium or Appium is it has quite a sophisticated tool for identifying, um, getting the, the handles to uh, acquire user interface objects. And unfortunately, my computer had a bit of a problem this morning and I can't get it running, but this is all dynamic, but I can show you what it looks like. So this is the Object Identification Center. Yeah? You bring this up, and then you can tell it you want to start spying. And you bring up an application. This is actually a web application. Yeah? And then you can say, OK, I want to find my user interface elements. Yeah? So with normal Selenium, you would have to open up Chrome, right-click on it, say expect element, and then go make your own um, selector. And what this does is it makes it really easy. You can just mouse over what you want, click on it, and then it brings it into here. Now this, I think, is interesting to Oren because 
Then they have some pretty sophisticated stuff where you can look into the different identifiers, how it's being identified, and fine-tune that yourself. So here's the different identifiers. So if you want to customize how you're identifying it, then you can go to the edit mode and then you can click on the things you want to use to identify it. And then you can click on this button and it will show you how many things match that description. Yeah? So you say, okay, this is what I want to identify this object as. And then you click on this button and it says, hey, there's four things that match that. You haven't given me a unique identifier, so you need to do something better. Does that make sense? <laughs> Blank stairs. <laughs> Maybe I should stand up. I'm sorry. Um, so then you can tune your identifiers exactly as you want it, refine it for a unique identification. You can regular use regular expressions. Well, yeah. Obviously, you have to have some consistent way that you can find your... Well, that's, that's the whole idea. If, if you have some kind of identifiers that are being dynamically generated, yeah, and every time you run it, you have different identifiers, then you can go in and try to build an identifier that will work based on something else. Yeah? And then you can use this to try to uniquely do that. But, I mean, a lot of these JavaScript test frame, uh, frameworks, they generate different IDs every time and they make it, if you're using IDs to identify things then you have unstable selectors. But th that's the idea behind this, that you can, if you have those problems, it gives you all the different ways you can use to identify your object and you can try different things via this UI. Well, that, it's, you can have regular expressions as well. Yeah. So then you click on it. Oh. Okay, now you've uniquely identified it, yeah? So then you want to copy it, you just click that thing, it copies the description, and then you can just go paste it into your IDE. So now you just click paste, and all that is generated for you. So all of this stuff that you see here, all this ugly text here, is automatically generated by the OIC. Yeah? So you can just click on what you want, and then you paste it in here, and then it's basically exactly the same. Yep. And for the mobile. So with the mobile, it actually has, I've never used it because I don't do mobile uh, testing with this, but they have actually a, a system where you can have a server and you plug a whole bunch of mobile devices into the server and then you can connect to the mobile devices here via the um, HP Mobile Center. Yeah? And it actually routes the user interface over the network to your screen. So it will actually screen scrape the mobile device and you will see it on your screen. And then you can also use the Object Identification Center to identify the mobile elements. But it's basically, I mean, the reason I liked it is because I've done a lot of Selenium development. There's a lot of, it's available for Java and C Sharp. So if you're writing in Ruby, you're out of luck. But if you're a Java Selenium developer, it's very, very easy to use this because it's almost exactly the same. So, And there's also, this is built on top of UFT, which people may be familiar with, so it does use the same engine, but this is a more sophisticated tool designed for people who are building, writing their software themselves. Yeah. So, any questions, Oren? <laughs> yes. Do I have a microphone here? Oh, right, here you go. Or this room is probably small enough. Does this work? No. Just talk loud. <laughs> Can you share with me the question that I just saw the video? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, as I'm still, uh, all the classes methods was you right here, uh, might be like uh, in, in Java, as, as I understood, it's not so uh, easy to support this code here, which was really related, actually. What's so, that? Uh, if, if you talk about your uh, previous slide, you show the code, which was generated here, yeah, this one. 
So this code here is generated, just yeah. the just what you use to get the unit. So it's, it's really um, maybe good, uh, good side that uh, these browser browsers, uh, browsers uh, tools here, because you you can kind of desktop and mobile, but, but uh, maybe bad side that it's not so clear and friendly code. Yes, which we, which we get from generation. That's this one. Um, yeah, I mean the selectors are. This is for a native Windows application. The selectors are extremely ugly because it's yeah. Well, I mean, this is these are internal Windows things. Like this is the Windows uh, assigns this handle to the class. Yeah, and to us it doesn't mean anything, but for Windows it's consistent, so it will always have the same number. Um, yeah, I mean, if your if your tests break and this stops working, you're not going to be managing this manually. Yeah. Um, there is, HP also has something which is an abstraction layer, which is similar to using page objects, and you can, you can manage it in there. It basically, it's, a, it's the same thing, it just is an abstraction layer, it queries that toolkit, and then you can manage that, or you can come in here and just regenerate it and copy and paste it back in. Is there a way to go back to the editing board and see what changed? If it broke, if it broke right now, and uh, I would either way to find out what exactly not working anymore, what changed, and why it broke it. No, but that is an interesting idea. Yeah, that's that's a good idea that you could take this and copy it back into the object identification center and then retune it. You could if you were using the application model because it's then it's integrated. I prefer to do it myself with the code, but yeah, exactly. Because then it's more, that's more tightly bound. Huh? Any question? Thank you. Okay. Oh. Um, uh, hi. Uh, so uh, you mentioned a Swing application. So I just wonder. Uh, does it handle the JavaFX applications as well? Uh, that's a good question. Probably because they probably are at the end swing applications. I think it's just a different way of writing swing applications. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, te the applications we're writing, we actually, or we're testing, we actually didn't write. So what we're doing is we're testing a lot of off-the-shelf software to make sure it works. Yeah, so we want a lot of automated tests that just load the software and make sure it works because we have a huge network and there's licensed servers and all sorts of things can go wrong. So, I mean, most of the testing we're doing is web application testing. Most of the stuff we're building are web applications, but we need, we want to be able to test everything to make sure our systems are working. Yeah. So this isn't actually for testing software, it's for more for testing that uh, deployments work. For us, of course, you could, if you're writing native software, you could use this to test it. Okay, thanks. Anybody else? Uh, you, you mentioned that this tool can be not only for web, yeah, but also for standalone. Probably. Yeah, so this is a standalone application here. Could you remember some other examples of usage of standalone testing with that tool? Maybe some specific like usage or something. Yeah, well, here what we're doing is we're testing, um, we have a we're basically testing a license server. So we have an application that we use and we deploy it, and we have a license server that it connects to, and we have a lot of problems with the license server being flaky or the network being flaky. Um, so here, this is a test to bring up. It basically opens the application, and then it opens a dialog box in the application, and it makes sure that the uh, license string is working. All right, this one's actually checking for an error. But, but you, I mean, for... For normal testing, you would do exactly what you do with a web application. Yeah, you would program your flows, and yeah, if you're testing, I mean, if you're testing Windows apps, you can't really get around these ugly um, selectors because that's just how Windows is. So, of course, you can have ugly web selectors as well. So, so um, yeah, if you're interested, you can go online and HP. You can download it and use it for a month for free and play around with it. Uh, it works with both Eclipse and Visual Studio. It will work with IntelliJ shortly as well. Okay, thank you.